good evening welcome welcome as you can tell it's getting a little dark outside last time it happened like this i didn't think about cutting these lights on so it was in the dark but i have learned since then and but we are a little better prepared today praise god you know it's a little it's a little different lighting you know you know i think it makes me look handsome praise the lord um Tonight is going to be more long of teaching, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But I got some exciting news for the ministry. Starting each Monday on the YouTube channel. Now, I may I may share the link from YouTube to Facebook, but it's just going to be directly posted to YouTube. Every Monday, I'm going to begin to do a teaching on the book of James. This is fresh off the cuff. I found out about 10 minutes before I shot this. I was in the shower praying, you know, where I do a lot of my communion with God in the shower, and and then just it just popped in my mind, and it won't it won't be thinking. I was like, it said, start teaching a series. I was like, series. And it said Mondays. I was like, Mondays. Teach a series on Mondays. And then Book of James came up. I was like, okay. So as long as the Lord's leading it, we are going to start this Monday. I will be posting the video either Sunday evening or first thing Monday morning before I leave for work. But we are going to be going deep dive through the book of James, and I'm excited. And you know, 20, 30 minute videos at most. Not going to be like these. And it's just strictly teaching. And you know, I'm excited about it. It's. You know, it was in the shower I got the call to preach. It's in the shower I was. God gave me the idea to start doing these videos, and you know, when you're getting outside clean, it's like the Lord's working inside, getting you cleaned up and ready to roll. Praise God. But that's the news, and I'm excited for it. I love the Book of James. I actually had had a message given to me one day on the book that's going to take place in the book of james but i'm really be thinking it's going to be going along in this teaching and you know it's a wonderful wonderful book it is james chapter 1 verse 4 is actually a verse that's there near and dear to me and it's one that i will not forget but let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. The Lord dropped that verse in my spirit right before I started to go through a trial. It was him warning me and, well, let's just say, patience had her perfect work. But you know, as always, even in my own mess ups, even in your own mess ups, the Lord will bring you through. Praise God. But I'm very excited about that. Look for it on Mondays on the YouTube channel. If you want to find it, it's Jacob Hawley Ministries. And like I said, I may share the link on Facebook, but it's really just going to be prioritized, prioritized on the YouTube channel. Let's get into tonight's message. So, Saturday, I like to do some walking. And I listen, to, I get outside and shoot the basketball, and I listen to sermons. And... I was listening to a teaching on the book of John by Kathy Duplantis. Her husband, Jesse Duplantis, is one of the ministers I listened to tremendously in the beginning stages of me walking with the Lord. You know, you may say, well, you should have been reading the word for it. Yeah, I should have. But, you know, sometimes people get their stuff. They receive the revelation, and they can speak it to you so you can get it quicker. And, you know, sometimes... The Lord, the Lord places preachers and teachers in the fivefold ministry, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and preachers, and pastors. They replace them in there to equip the body. So, you know, and I learned a lot from this man. But she was teaching, and she was talking about Jesus, and I'm not going to get all into it. But she, said, she was saying, her husband says, you know, Jesus got a little gangsta in him. And I said, <laughs> yeah, I can see that. And then it's, you know, you know that moment when God speaks to you, and it's just like, I froze for a second. I said, good news gangsters. And then I, as I was running, gospel gangsters. 
And that's the title of the ver this verse. That's the title of today's, mes today's message. And it may, it's, it's look like it's going to be more of a teach along the teaching lines tonight. But, you know, I get fired up with teaching, praise the Lord. But gospel gangsters. When, you know, when you look back, you, even in the Old Testament, we're going to be more focused on the New Testament. When you, the people got baptized in the Holy Ghost. As you can tell, that's what we're getting into tonight, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I mentioned it a lot, and I even mentioned in a past video that I might teach on it one time. Well, the Lord directed me to it. This can be a message about tongues, praise the Lord. Some people may be getting nervous right now. Don't worry, just listen. It's all scriptural. Hallelujah. But when you get Jesus, when he got baptized with the Holy Ghost, that's when his ministry began. That's when the miracles began. And Jesus is the example for each and every one of us. And so, Jesus got baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's when he started doing miracles. So you may say, well, I don't have, well, I want to do some miracles. You can do one. Get baptized in the Holy Ghost. See, when you are born again, the Holy Spirit begins to reside in you. So basically, here's how I word it. The Holy Spirit baptizes you into the crucifixion of Jesus. You have been, in, now you're entered into covenant with what Jesus has done for you. Free gift. And now, going alongside of that is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's a separate experience from, from the being a born again. But there, you can get baptized in the Holy Ghost right after you get saved. Bless God. And it's, it's, it's wonderful. So it's and then that's where Jesus baptizes you into the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit begins to fill you and overflow unto you and becomes it comes upon you. And we're gonna get into some scripture on it. And you get a boldness to you. You get a boldness. You know, Jesus. You know, people think of Jesus as loving. He was loving. Oh, he was. But he was bold to the religious people. And it won't, he did it out of love too. But he was bold to them. He would say things to them that they wouldn't want to. You know what? They were religious people. They knew the word, head knowledge, but they didn't have a heart knowledge. And the way for the word to be effective is to be sown into your heart. And your heart is your soul. And, your, and when you look at the Bible, it could either be referring to your soul or your spirit. It, as one of my teachers say, it is the bridge from your spirit to your soul. And your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. I've gone over this several times. But, you know, good stuff. Good stuff, man. But so, the religious people got mad. Think of John the Baptist. Man, that John the Baptist was gangster. Jesus was gangster. Think I think of the story of uh, the woman, uh, the the woman caught in the act of adultery. The people are coming. The Pharisees are coming, and according to the law of Moses, they could. But Jesus was the seed of grace being thrown in. So the Pharisees were sitting there talking. Man was sitting there doodling on the ground. You know how gangster that is? To sit there, people trying to talk to you, and you're sitting there like. And then said this He who sinned not cast the first stone. And I personally believe when he was saying that, he was talking about he who has not done this sin cast the first stone. Because you got to think of this. Them Pharisees were being peeping toms. They're sitting there, you know. When a person's having a, doing a, having an affair and adultery, well, maybe back in, I don't, I don't know. They're not out there just getting it on outside where people can see it. No, they're, they're trying to be hidden. So the Pharisees were being peeping toms. So they're already being weird. So when Jesus said that he said not cast the first stone, everyone left. It was just Jesus there. And he tells her, he says, oh. I should have read it. He says, is there anyone who condemns you? And she says, no. So he went from gangster to the people who were of the devil. The fair religious people are deceived of the devil. They may, they know how to act. You can tell I'm not religious because I'm very blunt and very out there. I'm 
the Lord's still working on me with some of it. Because sometimes I'm really, really, uh, when I say the P word, P-I-S-S, -S, you know, I don't find a problem with it. But, you know, some people might, and I've addressed that. But Jesus was gangster. Being baptized in the Holy Spirit is where the power comes from. It gives a boldness and a gangsta-esque quality. Can I tell you, when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, I, I, I call it the Holy Ghost. But it's just, it's translation. It's the same thing. You get bold. You get mad at the devil. It's okay to get angry. But you gotta focus that anger and a righteous anger towards the enemy. You know, Smith Wigglesworth, I haven't read much about him, but he was a powerful man of God. There was this woman who had a cyst on her belly, and he was a healing evangelist. And he brought her up on stage, and he told, and this is what he got from the Lord to tell her to, to, for her to be healed. He said, "Let go." And when he let go, she fell, and she hit the ground. A lot of us today will be, like, oh no, 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 and begin to be apologetic. He said, pick her back up. Do it again. That's gangster right there. And you know, you may think, that poor woman, that poor woman, that poor woman, she's getting hurt. But he knew what God said. But you got a little, you got, a little, you got the enemy, the devil, who's trying to, who's trying to fight you off. And after the third time, she felt it was gone. She was fully healed. You know, you sometimes you got to hit the devil. And sometimes a person gets in the way. You know, the, Jesus spit on a man's eyes to heal him. That's gangster right there. Jesus was gangster. You know, I know what you're saying. Some people are like, J Jacob, don't, you don't need to call G J Jesus gangster. Well, he was. And I'm not and I'm not trying to downplay him. But I'm trying to give you a modern approach to it. I'm not talking about these little thug gangs. I'm talking about, like, you know, mafia men. They got some class to them. And I'm not trying to... Jesus wasn't doing crime or anything, but it's just the analogy. He was a good news gangster. He won't let nothing bend the true word. I don't let nothing bend the true word. Hallelujah. If you've got your Bibles, turn with me to Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. In verse 4, it says, Being assembled with them, he commanded them, Do not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father of which you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. You know, these people lived with Jesus for three years. They were living with him. They knew they were taught everything. But Jesus told them to wait. So the key to that is for a successful ministry, you've got to have the power of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit, when you get born again, it's for your personal edification, to build you up, to strengthen you. But the baptism of the Holy Ghost is to send you on missions for the Lord. Because you can't do it without that boldness. You know, you got to be bold to pray in tongues, hallelujah. I love it. And you know, it's a prayer I can't mess up because I don't know what I'm saying. But down the future, I can tell you what. It will be revealed to me. It will be interpreted to me. Hallelujah. So, begin to operate in ministry or even just not even well, we're all called to be in the ministry just some different offices for each of us but you need this baptism of the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost will make you bold the Holy Ghost will have you talking to someone and you will say something you didn't expect the Holy Ghost will give you a word to say to someone and you may feel like uh oh uh -uh. I've been given a couple blunt things I had to say to people and only under the anointing am I blunt. And you know it's something I'm working on because sometimes you gotta be blunt with people, but you gotta do it in love. And it takes the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon you to be able to do stuff like that. You know, it's a wonderful, wonderful gift. And I'm I'm not Pentecostal. I'm not I'm not in denomination. I'm a child of God. And if it's in the word I want, to, I want a part of it. Hallelujah. Flip back with me to Mark chapter 16. The Great Commission. I like this I like this rendition of the Great Commission better than uh, the one in Matthew. Nothing wrong with the one in Matthew. I just... 
I like this one. In verse 15, it says, He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will not be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. And I'm not going to read them all. But in the verse 17, it says, They will speak with new tongues. You know, most people interpret it as, well, you're going to clean their mouth up. Yeah, true, but you get a new heavenly prayer language. See, speaking in tongues is, you know why the devil fights speaking in tongues so much? Because he don't know what you're saying, but you're praying the perfect will of God. And I got more scripture to go along with it, so I don't want to get ahead of myself. But you're praying that perfect will of God. The devil don't know what you're saying. You are breaking spiritual, evil spiritual forces all around you. And it's just cool. Hallelujah. And see, and then uh, as he goes on to set in verse 20, he says, Then they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. So the Lord, so when you preach the word, there should be signs following. Signs are a part of preaching the word. You know, people are like, well, you know, you should just come to Jesus because of what he did. Yeah, true. But some people, you know, it takes something. You know, and this is that power comes on when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost. You know, to be a missionary in Africa, I really believe you should be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Why? Because you need that power. You got you got witch doctors, other crazy people there, and they know how the spiritual operates, but they don't know this power that we have access to to tap into the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So let's let's uh, we're gonna do some reading tonight. We're going to Acts chapter two. The day of Pentecost was upon them. Then amazing thing took. You know, this is the section uh, non-charismatic people uh, skip over. But I love it. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. See, that's in verse 4 and 5, it said, y'all do not depart. So they were all sitting there together. They were waiting. Hallelujah. They are like, yeah. Well, I don't think they were like that. But you know, they worried. You know, Jesus was gone. And they were just sitting back like they learned all this stuff. But they gotta have that power of the Holy Ghost. You know how to unlock the scripture? Through the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost wrote the scripture. Jesus is the scripture. God is the Father of the Scripture. It's the Trinity, hallelujah. And let's continue reading. Suddenly a sound like a mighty rushing wind came from heaven and it filled the house where they were sitting. There appeared to them tongues as a fire being distributed and resting on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them to speak. And you know, people go around, because if you continue to read, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and read. And then I'm going to say what I was going to say. Now dwelling in Jerusalem were Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. When the sound occurred, the crowd came together and were confounded. Because each man heard them speaking in his own language. They were all amazed and marveled, saying to each other, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the regions of Libya, Near Cyrene, the visit and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own languages the mighty work of God. They were all amazed and perplexed, saying to each other, What does that mean? I'm gonna stop right there. So, people just tend to like trying to limit God. They say, You know, they were just it was just so they could preach in other languages. That's, a, that's just one factor of it. You are a spirit being. And God is a spirit. So you, you worship God in spirit and truth. So when you're praying, it's your, you're praying out of your spirit. It's your heavenly language. It's grace language. Because when you don't know what to pray, you pray in the Holy Ghost. When English stops, switch over to the heavenly language. 
I got to tell you, you'll be able to unlock some, some amazing things. The more you do it, the more you grow in it, you may end up being able to do it in another language. And it's the Lord working through you. You know how I can tell it's real? And it, it took me some, it took me one night re praying in the Spirit for an hour. Because before I would struggle to read the Bible while doing it. It's because I was a, I was a baby in it. I'm still growing in it. And now I can go through and read and comprehend the word while I'm praying in the spirit. So I know so that's how you know it's not yourself doing it. But you have to use you have to let your tongue be used. It's not gonna God's not gonna force it through you. See, when I do it, you hear my voice. It's coming through my vocal cords, but it's the spirit. It's not me praying for my own understanding, it's me praying out the spirit. So, you know, that was just one small part of it. And it goes into verse 13. Others mock and said, these men are full of new wine. You know, I'm against drinking. I've said it plenty of times. But I got to tell you, you can get drunk in the Holy Ghost. See, you know, people think, no, nah, and people mock that. But, you know, everything the devil has is something that he is perverted of God. You know, every good thing, you, everything in this world has been something that God created he perverted. And most of the time, it's Christian men who get the ideas for things, or it's been revealed to them by God, and then they end up getting into the world. And so people think, well, look at the devil just came up with. The devil don't come up with nothing new. That fool can't come up with nothing new. God's number is 777. He has to be 666, right under God. God's perfect number is 7. Hallelujah. So, you know what? Can I tell you something real quick? This was dropped in my spirit the other day. A, a verse I'm beginning to see, and people are comparing it to how church services go. And I'm not, you know, I'm not knocking the church services. I'm not knocking the people. They say the the church begins to look like the world, and you know, people think because the church is dark, may have some strobe lights going on, they're being like the world. No, what that verse is saying is doing worldly things. There's nothing wrong with having a service in the dark. There's nothing wrong with it. There's no set way to do it. And people are confusing it. You know, rock and roll, I've told you that's a, a fan favorite of mine. God created rock and roll. The devil didn't come up with rock and roll. The devil hijacked it. You know, I'll tell you a song I've been listening to. It's called Jesus Freak by DC Talk. It's more of like that punk grunge style. And I like that punk grunge style music. But I know it's not good to listen to. So, you know, and you got people like that, DC Talk, that were, what would people think if they knew I was a Jesus freak? And in that, that punk style, God came up with that. But, you know, the church, religious people don't like it. That's like the world. That's nothing. They don't like, religious people don't like nothing new. And God ain't really come up with nothing. He's just revealing stuff he's already came up with. And, you know, the church tosses it away. That's just a little rant right there. God is raising up. Uncon what's the word God is raising up people that don't fit the standard for it God is raising me up I don't fit the standard of a preacher but you know why he's using me because he gets all the glory because I couldn't do this without him I couldn't do this without the boldness of the Holy Ghost he's made me a gospel gangster so you know when people begin to quote that verse they quote it wrong it's when you got the people that are there are people in the body of Christ with main denominations that are, I seen it the other day, promoted a transgender to be a ordained minister. Yet you've got people who preach on prosperity, which is in the word of God, and they get dragged down hassle. But then this crap goes on. You know, I have no problem with a gay person going to church, but don't put them in a thought of leadership. They need to go to church so they can be delivered. You know, We have a generation that is being, the devil's trying to steal from God. And you're not going to be able to win them by judging them. But the church has been doing for centuries now. I, I'm not the typical person. I, I don't look, I'm growing my beard, I'm growing my hair. I'm a, I had a mullet at one time, a preacher with a mullet. I don't fit the norm. But it don't matter what I look like. God don't call the qualified, he qualifies the called. And because he called me this, he is going to qualify me to do what he told me to do. So, you know, 
And, but, you know, persecution is going to come. And a lot of persecution comes in the church. I may get persecuted for this mess. People are like, oh, tongues has passed away. Tongues has passed away. Then why do I have it? And you may say, it's of the devil. I've been drunker than a skunk and ain't prayed in tongues. I've been higher than a kite and I ain't prayed in tongues. I, I, I went to a bar when I was drinking. I did not just hear someone like say, oh, she no que porque le se he shaka. I did not hear someone speak in tongues like that. No, it's a spiritual gift. It's of God. It ain't passed away. And I'm going to shake you to the verse that people say is passed away. And I'm going to prove them wrong with the word. You know, I can prove a lot of these false doctrines wrong with the word of God. you got to rightly divide the truth. Study to show thyself approved. Get that boldness of the Holy Ghost. Become a gospel gangster. Hallelujah. I'm going to read a little bit more. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all you who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. For these are not drunk as you suppose. See, this is the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And I'm going to read what he says. This is from... This goes through verse 17 through 21, but it's from Joel 2, 28 through 32. In the last age it, it shall be, says God, that I will pour out my spear on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my men servants and maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and glorious day of the Lord comes. And whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. My mom call you out. You know I record my videos on Friday, uh, Thursday. Can you call me right now? You'll see it. Tonight. You'll see it tomorrow. But see, it was prophesied. There's a poor spirit on sons and daughters. So God ain't no respect to person, men and women. Women can preach. You disagree with me? I'll prove you wrong with the word. But I try not to argue. Because why the Bible says don't argue with a fool. And if you're trying to go against scripture, you're a fool. Deal with it. You know, you got to be a gospel gangster to say something like that. I ain't going to go out right and sell it to you. But if you're going to act like a fool... I'll tell it to your face. But I'll do it in love. I'll say, I love you, man, but you being a fool or woman, I'm not prejudiced. I like them all. I don't care what color you are or what gender you are. As long as you're the two genders God created or the colors God created. I ain't going to be prejudiced towards you. I love all people. I don't like all people sometimes, but that's something the Lord's working on with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that's the day of Pentecost, the pouring out of the Spirit of God. He gives us everything. See, after the cross, okay, think of it this way. The Sabbath was at the end in the Old Covenant. So you went through all your week, and then you had your day of rest, the Lord's day at the end. But now with Jesus, the Sabbath is the beginning of the week. We shifted to Sunday, how we celebrate it now. And, you know, it's just it just proves that God is first in everything. And it's just a gift to each and every one of us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. You should get excited over this. I'm excited over this. You know, I told you I get fired up even when I teach. Hallelujah. That's what the Spirit of the Lord will do to you. Hallelujah. Man. But you know, there's some benefits to praying in tongues. And guess what? I can do it through the Word. Turn with me to the book of Romans, chapter 8. We're going to be back in Acts in a little bit. And finish it off with a story of boldness. So if you are turning with me to Romans chapter 8, 26 through 27. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. He who searches the hearts know what, he, what the mind of the Spirit is, because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And, you know, people tend to be like, well, you know, see, it says uh, utterances of... Uh, uh, intercedes with groanings too deep for words. In the Greek, it literally means articulate speech. 
when I pray in tongues, you don't know what I'm saying. It really sounds like I'm drunk. If you if, if we're being honest. And but that's what it means. So when I pray in tongues, take It's my spirit praying and it's searching the hidden mysteries and wisdom of God. It's my spirit, because my spirit man knows all things. That is the thing born again of Jesus and is encased in the Holy Spirit. It's the thing connected to God. So they work together to intercede for me or intercede on others' behalf. The more you pray in tongues, the Lord will end up laying on you to pray in tongues. And you could be interceding for someone across the world. Hallelujah. You know, ain't, ain't it nice that God's looking out for people across the world? The Holy Spirit will remind you of people. You know, just the other week, the Lord put someone in a dream of mine. And I reached out to them, and they needed it. I would have never thought about it. I, not even my, that's one of the last people I would have thought about reaching out to. I, I, it's someone from my past. But you know, that's what the Holy Ghost will do. That's like the Baptist. You need, we need that power, church. Praise be to God. Turn me to First Corinthians chapter fourteen. You know what? Hold it before we leave right there. You know, Jesus spoke in tongues. I can prove it with scripture. Going off of that, which means articulate speech, when Jesus was in front of the tomb that Lazarus was out, you say it said he groaned in the spirit. That's what he was doing. He was praying in tongues. And I got no scripture records to back it up. And because he was baptized in the Holy Ghost, he had his heavenly language. Hallelujah. And I got another one. When Jesus was on the cross, he cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lamo sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was praying in tongues. Because it was later translated to say that. You say, you may say, he was just praying in Hebrew. Why would the Bible say it like that then? Why would they, why would they just say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's praying in tongues. So if Jesus did it, don't you think you should? You know, Jesus does a lot of things that we don't want to do. Let's stop right there. Before we go, stop with me in uh, verse chapter 13 and 1 Corinthians. We're going to read verse 9 through 10. For we impart and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect comes, and that which is imperfect shall pass. Hold up. Let's go to verse 8. Love never fails, but if there are prophecies, they shall fail. If there are tongues, they shall cease. If there is knowledge, it shall vanish. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect comes, then that which is imperfect shall pass away. See, people read that, and they think, oh, you know, they say it's the Bible. The Bible's perfect. But that's not what this verse is referring to. So it says knowledge, Pat, it shall vanish. So we don't wait. So when people, their, their point is invalid right there. You say, is knowledge passed? No. Tongues haven't ceased. Prophecies, they do fail, but they don't always fail. For the most part, a lot of people are accurate with it. I've given a couple of accurate prophecies. Now people are going to think I'm weird. I don't care. Hallelujah. But so. You see that. But, but so, and the Lord actually gave me this point. And I said, Lord, that's awesome. And I said, crap, since you gave it to me, I can't argue with it. Which I, I know I don't need to argue. So when people say the Bible is that which is perfect, it means that stuff has passed away. You know, there's still people who don't have the Bible in their language. So that means it'd be working for them, but not for us. And God never changes. If it was meant to pass away, it wouldn't have been written about. But that's a whole nother thing. All right. While you're there, go to first chapter 14. We're going to read verses 1 through 5. Follow after love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in an unknown tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him, although in the spirit he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks to men for their edification and exhortation and comfort. He who speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. But he who prophesies edifies the church. I desire that you all speak in tongues, but even more that you prophesy. 
For greater is he who prophesies than he who speaks in tongues, unless he interprets so the church may receive edification. You know, in the beginning, it says, follow after love and desire spiritual gifts. You should desire to speak in tongues and to prophesy. You know, not everyone is called to be a prophet and sent in the office of prophets, but we're all called to prophesy. You know, the Lord will give you a word to get oral work. If you go back to verse 12, it goes to the gifts of the Spirit. And I got a little point going along with that as well. But it's something we should want. It's a gift from God. And I, I like how it says that. For he who speaks in an unknown tongue does not speak to men but to God. Because it's your spirit directly praying out to the spirit of God. Praying out, praying out your per, his perfect will. The perfect will of God is already inside of you. How do you fish it out? Praying in tongues. Communing with God. He will reveal things to you. You know, there's a lot of people who don't believe in this baptism of the Holy Ghost. And, you know, and because they don't believe it and don't accept it, you are missing out on one of the most powerful aspects of the Christian walk. The day of Pentecost is wonderful. The ability that God put on us is awesome, and I thoroughly enjoy it. You know, the more I do it, the more I grow in God the easier it becomes to share this word. My, my note styles have changed because of different ways God's been leading me. But it's all through praying in the Spirit. You know, it edifies yourself. And then it says in good verse 5, I desire that you all speak in tongues, even more that you prophesy. And you know, so we should be cherishing both of them. But you know, if you want to prophesy, you really need to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I... I'll be praying in the spirit in the shower and I'll close my eyes and I'll, I'll see things like I just see it and I can give a word to somebody and you know people you may think that's weird but it's of God it's awesome hallelujah let's continue reading turn with me to go over to verse 13 let him who speaks in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret for if I pray in an untoned tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. So when we're praying in the spirit, we need to pray and we believe, and we need to pray like Mark 11, 23 and 24. When you pray, believe that you receive. See, I may not understand it, but I believe I'm receiving what the spirit is praying out of me. And I pray for an interpretation. And it may not be right there, but you know, you will get an interpretation on it. You know, a lot of the times when I go off on tangents and videos, and it happens to flow along with it, I fully believe it's because I was praying in the Spirit before or sometime in the past, and it's my Spirit, and it's getting the understanding of it. It's awesome. Then uh, verse 15, it says, What is it then? I'll pray with the Spirit, and I'll pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding. Otherwise, when you bless with the Spirit, how will he who occupies the place of the unlearned say amen? At your giving of thanks, seeing he does not understand what you say. For you indeed give thanks well, but is the others not edified. In verse 18 it says, I thank my God that I speak in tongues more than you all. And you know, and it goes on to say, yeah, in church I try to speak five words of my understanding, then my voice with my voice I may teach others, and then ten thousand words in an unknown tongue. But you know, if you when you go through and read and all that. It don't say you can only pray in the tongues. Pray in your understanding as well. But, you know, this morning I was praying in the Spirit. And then the Lord put something on my mind, a person in my mind, and I prayed in the understanding for it. I can sing in tongues. It's something that's growing in me. That's awesome. I can get a little tune or something going and start praying in the Spirit and singing in the Spirit. It's awesome. And then I'll sing on my understanding. So when you pray, you can praise God. You can give praise and worship to Him by singing in the Spirit. So it doesn't take away it actually lifts up your prayer life. Hallelujah. And I like how it says in verse 18, I thank my God that I speak in tongues more than you all. He's talking to the Corinthian church right there. This church operated in spiritual gifts like no other. And he said he prayed in tongues more than all of them. You know, when he was in Arabia, after he got saved, he was praying in the Spirit going over the Old Testament. That's how he got all his revelation. From praying in the Spirit and reading the Word of God. And that's how you get revelation. And he meditated on it. Hallelujah. 
And so, you know, and I got another point I'm going to go. In uh, chapter 12, it talks about spiritual gifts. And one of them is the gifts of gift of tongues. So there's the gift of tongues, and then there's unknown tongues or other tongues. And the gift of tongues is part of this uh, non-gifts of the spirit. It is the, the other tongues or unknown tongues is your spirit praying to God, but the gift of tongues is God giving a word to putting the, giving speaking to the church. So and then where it says. But they get, not everyone operates in it. And so people tend to say, well, you know, only certain people can get baptized in the Holy Ghost. No, the baptism of the Holy Ghost is your own personal prayer language. But the gifts of tongues is the is for the is a gift for the church for the God to give a message to the church. And that has to be interpreted. Interpreted. It's got a little bit more left to go. No, uh, chapter 14, back to then 39. Therefore, brothers, eagerly desire to prophesy, and do not forbid speaking in tongues. Don't forbid speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Hallelujah. We should all be doing it. All right. Just got a couple. We got just a little bit more to go. Y'all enjoying this so far? I am. I, I thoroughly enjoyed teaching. You know. I, I, I love it when the preaching anointing comes upon me. But you know, I, I actually enjoy the teaching part. Just to either, if it's either a breakdown. So I'm gonna, I'm looking forward to uh, teaching the book of James. Start pulling. Ephesians 6 verse 18. Pray in the spirit always. With all kinds of prayer and supplication to that, that end. Be alert with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So we need to pray in the Spirit always. You can do it throughout your day. See that? I'm praying under my breath. Nobody can hear me. But I'm praying the perfect will of God. You know when the Bible says pray without ceasing? That's what it's referring to. Because I can't sit everywhere I'm going, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this. Now, I can be in communion with God. But I can pray in the Spirit all day. Do I do it? Not yet. Not yet. So I, I'm, I'm working on it. The Lord's working with me on it. Hallelujah. All right, turn with me to Jude. Chapter 1. Verse 20. But you, beloved, build yourselves up in the most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. To build, you build yourself up when you pray in tongues. And you build up in that most holy faith. You know how it is that most holy faith? Because you are trusting God with your tongue. You know, the tongue is a powerful thing that some people have, a, including myself, sometimes struggle to control. But when you pray in tongues, you are giving your tongue to God and tr you're fully trusting him for every syllable and it builds yourself up you know and it all goes back to trusting in God hallelujah thank you Jesus so build yourself up by praying in tongues now turn back with me to the book of Acts Chapter 7, starting in verse 51. You know, this is just something about the boldness of being baptized in the Holy Ghost. So this is, if you know anything about the book of Acts, this is talking about Stephen. He gets arrested, and then right here, he's going through, he's preaching to them the word, the word that these Pharisees would know. And this is right after, and this is what he says, verse 51. You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit, as your fathers did, so do you. you got to be a gangster to say someone's stiff-necked. 
That's gangster right there, you stiff necked people. But he was being truthful. Verse 52, which of the prophets have your fathers not persecuted? They've even killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, of whom you have now become the betrayers of murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels, but have not kept it. So, you know, a religious person will preach to you something to do, but they won't live by it. Or they won't even make an effort to let the Lord work through them in it. And, you know, they got called out for it. You stiff-necked people. That's gangster right there. He had just been arrested. He's in front of all of them. He is a bold man, the Holy Ghost. And you know why they were mad at him? He was just called to be a little a servant man to help the body. He wasn't even called to be a preacher. But because he was so filled with the Holy Ghost, there were signs and wonders. And it was drawing a crowd. But then the glory was going to God. Religious people want the crowd for themselves. They want to be uplifted for themselves. And that's why they didn't like him. That's why they didn't like the apostles. That's why they don't like this. It's because it draws attention, and then they just give them the glory to God. Because, you know, couldn't do it without God. God gets all the glory. God deserves every single bit of it. Verse 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed their teeth at him. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. They were convicted. But instead of letting the love of God work in that conviction. They turned their heads about it. And they said they gnashed their teeth at him. And then verse 55, but being full of the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. See, that spiritual roundup can look into sometimes how he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God verse 57 then they cried out with a loud voice closed their ears and rushed to him in unison and they threw him out of the city and stoned him the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God praying Lord Jesus receive my spirit then he knelt down and cried with a loud voice Lord do not hold this sin against them having said this he fell asleep, and Saul was consenting to his death. You know, and you see what ended up happening to Saul. I'm not going to get into him, but he was definitely a gospel gangster. I would love to pull some scripture out about him, but I didn't. But in verse 16, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. That's a gangster right there. even when the enemy was killing even when they were killing them to look past, to look that it was a spirit of religion on these people, when you're looking at the people you get mad with the spirit that's upon them but he said, do not hold this sin against them well, I think they killed a deer but that's gangster right there that's, to me that's gangster and you know This baptism of the Holy Ghost, it'll make you bold, but you know, it'll also make you shut up. It'll make you dance, sing, and shout, but it'll also lead you into being graceful. It truly is a wonderful, wonderful thing. But if you are not saved, can I tell you something? Salvation is for you as well. And it's the most quintessential, greatest miracle that could ever happen. Jesus comes in you and recreates your your old spirit, your dead spirit. And it comes alive. See, your spirit you're spiritually dead, now you're spiritually alive. Recreated as you as he is, so are you in the sword, and that's you in the spirit. And you know, it's all because Jesus loves you and Jesus died for you. So if you would like to get saved, say this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. I need a Savior. I believe with my heart that you were raised from the dead. And I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. 
and I thank you for saving me. If you said that prayer, you are now a new creature in Christ. You were born again. But don't stop there. Get this baptism of the Holy Ghost. You can get it right now. If you want that, say this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is a gift for me. It's a gift you promised me. So when I'm praying now, I believe that I receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And then just start praising God, then it'll shift and then shift in the heavenly language. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And you know, you may not be, in the beginning, you may not be as fluent in that. You may just have one syllable. Keep at it. Can I tell you, when I, at the beginning, I thought it wasn't real. But you keep doing it. Keep having faith in God. Keep trusting God to give you the utterance. And then you will begin to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. I, the day I got baptized, April 6th of this year, it was not that fluent. But the more I do it, the more fluent it got. And continue to renew your mind with the Word of God. Continue to seek Him. Hallelujah. I hope everyone, each and every one of y'all enjoyed this teaching tonight. It's, it's enjoy, I enjoyed it as well. The Lord actually, uh, several months, uh, whenever the Ian was around, I was walking, and the Lord instructed me on doing a series on that Great Commission. So now I have my mission for, message for the uh, verse 17. They spoke with new tongues. Hallelujah. Now, I may do the rest of those whenever the Lord leads. If you would like to sow into the ministry, you reach out to me. Check, cash, anything. We will document it. I'm trying to figure out how to get things set up for this. The Lord is doing great things. As you see, we're already expanding into two videos a week. And you know what I'm saying? That's not a lot. Can I tell you this? The Lord is building me up. Things are changing. And pray to God about it. Don't do it because you like me as a person. Do it because the Lord's leading you. If this video touched anyone, reach out to me. Let me know. I would love to hear. I'm thankful for everyone who watches these. And remember, be a gospel gangster. Have a good one.